recording. And Peter, I have a problem. It's I, ha I know I have an old browser, but it says I can still join the meeting without the software, but it doesn't say how. Oh, hmm. well, that's a tough one. You have an older browser? Do you have a different browser, perhaps? Yeah, I've got Vista. So. You have Vista. Oh, uh, that's Windows Vista. Oh, I see. Right. right. Uh, that's a very old operating system. Uh, yes, I know, but I don't get rid of it because I lose everything whenever I change browsers. Yeah. Um, will, will the iPad allow me to see it? Yes, I think so. Uh, I haven't done it that way. I, oh, I've done it on my iPhone, so yeah, it, it works. Okay, why, why don't you go ahead. I will figure out how to get on using the iPad. All right, and I'm recording this, so you can view it later if you okay. don't, need to. Don't let me hold things up. Is anybody else having problems seeing my screen? No, I see it. Julie sees it. Great. Okay. All right. Um, so let's start ahead. This, so this is the Wild Apricot site. Um, and the plan is, is that once, um, once we launch the site, we'll be using the same domain that you're using right now, which I believe is cglhs.org. Let me just bring that up. Mm -hmm. Oops. So we'll be using this domain when we finally launch and get rid of the wild apricot subdomain. Okay. Um, but that's sort of a last step when we kind of complete the whole process. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and log in. Um, because I think you've been reviewing these, these uh, public pages already. And the focus today will really be on how do you manage the site going forward. And I'm going to try to cover cover that. And I think um, I think that maybe if we can hold off on questions, maybe until I mean my presentation is only about 20 minutes or so, and then and then maybe we can address any questions you might have about um, specific issues or you know, anything else you may have discovered. But in any case, so I'm going to start by logging in. And it's saved my my login credentials here, so I'll go ahead and press login. Now, I my status is as an admin, so I have this option that members will not have the same, will not view um, the exact same things that I'm about to show you. Okay. They don't have access to make the kinds of changes. They will see sort of profile, this profile page, which is currently uh, the landing page that we configured so that people can see if they're uh, delinquent on their membership dues and uh, change their privacy settings, what emails they'd like to subscribe to and status of payments. So. I'm going to go ahead and, and now switch to admin view. And uh, the first thing I, I kind of wanted to give you a sort of review all of these tabs so you can kind of have a general view of, of how the site is structured. This is, again, only viewable by the admin, um, or the admins, I think we have several now, I think six, maybe, so more than several. Uh, this gives you some of the highlights, total number of contacts, um, members, and by the way, this number, while I think this number may not change, we're still um, in the process of importing uh, the membership data again. Um, Brandy and Raymond have been uh, going back and forth and uh, we're about to do the third and I hope final import sometime this week. As Brandy's kind of going through some of those details. Uh, in addition to the 
overview, um, you'll find account information. Now, currently, the billing contact is David, and it shows his information here. Um, now, the organization contact is under the organization tab, and currently that's set to my email, which will change before we launch. But this is, the organization contact is usually the main contact for support-related questions for the organization, including, um, let's say, your email newsletters and so forth. So, so that's, they separate between account and organization. Um, many organizations use a, a role-based email here. And I know that uh, email came up in one of the earlier uh, exchanges I had with David. So, for example, if you had a role-based email like support at uh, cglhs.org, um, you'd want to enter that here. Okay, or membership or something like that. Whatever organization email you'd like to use. I think you have a Gmail currently, though. Right. Um, the only other one that I think uh, referrals we can skip uh, if you want to refer uh, other organizations to that, that. That's what that link is about. It's an affiliate link. Um, support. Um, if you have any questions going forward, uh, feel free to email me um, or, you know, through David or whoever the current uh, web chair is uh, for your organization, and I'd be happy to assist. But there is, Wild Apricot also has their own contact information, and this is what you find. So they have a phone number, they have phone support, they have email support. You can also create a support ticket. And they have a billing questions uh, email as well. Um, the Getting Started tab um, is worth it if you want to take a look at, uh, they have a lot of helpful videos going forward. So don't feel like you have to cram <laughs> based on this one little orientation here. They've, they've got a lot of different emails and tutorials on, the, on their website. Um, good for a refresher. So, um, on the contacts tab, which is the next one, so just to make clear, the Wild Apricot platform distinguishes between contacts and members. Um, every member is a contact, but not every contact is a member. So that's why there's uh, the, the member list, membership list is often smaller. It never exceeds the total number of contacts, but sometimes it's the same. Um, and this just allows you to separate between members only emails, for example, and emails that you may want to send to a larger audience, people who may have attended events in the past or who are former members, but uh, perhaps have lapsed. So that's how we make that distinction. Um, there are these, it, it always look for these green buttons in the upper left because the most important functions are often controlled with these green buttons here. So from this screen, you can add a contact directly if you want to. You can add a member um, if you know that they're already an active member. You can export a um, membership list to a spreadsheet. And you can also email contacts. Uh, that might be useful uh, for any kind of an email blast. Um, just quickly going through some of these other sub-tabs here. There, if you're looking for a particular member, um, you can use this search feature. And they uh, allow you to add other criteria. Uh, sometimes I think, frankly, the simple search is, is the easiest one. So if I happen to be looking for a gentleman with the last name Laws, oh, I see there too. Okay. And um, there's David's information right there. So it comes right up. I can then click on the link and then I'll see 
David's information, kind of highlight information, including his address, his phone number, his email address, what his status is, he's an account administrator, and the last time he logged in. Okay. Um, now, there are a lot of things that I can change in the screen. Uh, I can look, for example, I can activate his membership. Uh, this, this may be something that you, you may do uh, on a frequent basis. I know with my own Wild Apricot site, um, I like to be able to confirm that someone is, is uh, a, a true member and not someone just trying to uh, slip in through the back door. Um, and I think that's how we decided um, to have that final confirmation for your organization where you have to actually confirm there and activate. So that's where you would activate somebody. So his status right now is pending. And if you want to activate it, you can. You have two options, activate without invoice or first generate an invoice because we want David to pay his dues. So I'm not going to click on that right now because we're still in the midst of um, kind of importing the data and getting it more current. But um, I just want you to see that, that uh, membership activation is controlled from this tab. On the events tab, I have the option of recording an event registration directly. Um, so if someone is having is struggling because they're using an older version of Microsoft Windows, for example, and, and the website is not behaving correctly, perhaps, then I can record um, his registration then right from the screen. And then he'll show up as a registered member. Uh, I don't know, does, if your organization has donations, which I think you do have donations, you can also yeah. manually record donations on this tab. Um, that looks something like this, where um, you can enter in the donation amount, the date that the donation was made, it always defaults to, to today's date. Uh, tender uh, just means, you know, how are we gonna process this? Uh, did they give us cash, check? Uh, wire transfer. So you can see there are different options here. And incidentally, we have installed uh, PayPal. I'll come to that later. Um, but the interesting thing too is that, you know, when I clicked on that donation sub tab on his, um, on his membership detail page, you see I jumped to the donations tab here. And sometimes people get a little flustered by that. It's like, okay, I want to go back. So you have to press cancel. Always look at those green buttons. Um, that's that's your, I don't know, silver thread, whatever the metaphor is, back to where you were before. Um, and you can see I'm right back to where I was before uh, recording a donation. Um, sometimes you may find that there are uh, more than one or duplicates for a single member, so you can merge uh, duplicate records. Uh, so merging contacts, I just wanna show you this screen. This is a little more of an advanced uh, technique, and I recommend before doing this, you know, this is something we probably would wanna clear up uh, before we go live. Uh, but I think we've scrubbed the database pretty well, and I think we got rid of um, Duplicates, but this is where you, you can also do it here from the screen. And archive. So in Wild Apricot, you can't directly delete a member, but you can archive them. And that just means that they're moved away from being counted from the to total number of contacts, but they haven't been deleted from the system yet in case for example, they come back and decide they want to be a member again after, let's say, an absence of several years. So uh, this way we can preserve their data. I'm not going to archive uh, David's uh, membership information here, but that's what that button is for. You can actually um, 
then from the archive screen, delete him, delete that record permanently. So it is possible, but they break it into two steps just to kind of protect the database. Um, you showed searches. Okay, we've been doing imports for you. Uh, common fields is kind of an interesting area because this is where um, we've actually been working on customizing this and, and trying to make it consistent with your ACT database. So this is sort of a work in progress here. Uh, and it's a mixture of um, standard wild apricot fields and specific to your ACT fields. And um, so that's where this is. You can, um, uh, by, you know, you can add a new field if you want to by clicking on this uh, uh, button at the bottom. So, uh, and then each field, if I click on a field, like let's say, for example, um, I want to make changes to the organization field, a little dialog will appear on the right, and maybe I want to change the name from organization to Nonprofit. Then I would just select that and type nonprofit like so, and then I can decide other attributes like whether it's a required field or if I only want to enable it for administrators and so forth. I can also offer field instructions. Field instructions uh, is often overlooked, but it's very helpful for people, especially newcomers. It just, uh, it's, it's a good place to explain what that field is for. So if, if someone is joining your organization and let's say they belong to another association um, like uh, the Audubon Society, maybe, um, you just want to offer some instructions like um, uh, if you belong to another organization, Please enter the name here. That's kind of an example. Um, I'm actually going to close without saving, but um, I just wanted to give you an example of what um, of what this is. But if I did want to save my changes, I would click on this green button up here. Okay, I'm going to close it, and you can see that after I made this change, though, that there's a little orange update button, and any field in here that I make a change to will invoke this orange button. Uh, but I, it, the, the changes don't become permanent unless I click on Save All Changes. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's sort of the two-step process. And I'm gonna cancel. And it's going to revert to where we were. So that was the contacts tab. I'm going to um, now move on to the website tab. And I think this is where some of you have been spending a good deal of time. You can see, by the way, that uh, on the left, that here are all the website pages. And if there is, a, so you see we have home at the top. We've also got a couple of pages here with a red slash through an I, and that means that it's hidden. They're all listed as demos. And let's say, for example, that uh, I can see that I have two typography demos. Let's say I want to delete one of these pages. I just click on it, and then um, I can just move it to trash. Okay? Now, let's say, for example, that I, um, I'm going through and I wanted to make some changes to the home page. Well, here's the home page on the right. And if I wanted to edit the home page, I would click on the edit button. And the, the content management system is pretty intuitive. Now, we're using, um, in the slide show, I'm going to recommend that maybe, well, if I click on it, you'll see um, if I wanted to edit the code, 
You can see that our slideshow, because it's a custom widget that we created, or gadget, rather, uh, that we just pasted the custom code into this screen. And so that's probably not something that most of you would feel comfortable editing. But, um, yeah, you know, if you want to give it a try, absolutely. Uh, you can see that we've got um, already saved the images into the um, into a certain folder, and I'll show where the where these uh, files are later. But this is the path to the file, and uh, we've given it um, actually uh, captions which are loaded uh, with these um, anchor tags, and then the anchor tags are actually described more in full down here. So, pretty nifty, anyway. Um, moving on down here, you can see that just if you just wanted to edit a uh, uh, wild apricot gadget, here's a content gadget, and you just select it, and you'll see that, a, that the visual editor comes up at the top here. And you can see that I've got a default uh, text font of Laura. Uh, which is what we're using for these uh, headers, 42 uh, pixels, and left alignment and so forth. Um, I can, you know, I can edit it just like I would, you know, in Microsoft Word. You know, it's it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to cancel and just continue here. Um, these buttons here are kind of fixed in the template. They're not, uh, let's see if, uh, if we, oh no, we did. We, we made them custom HTML gadgets. So if I click on it again, again, this is a little more advanced, but if you want, we made it so that you could edit it, but this might be a little counterintuitive unless somebody knows HTML, but there's the code directly. So it is possible to edit these tags directly. I'm really glad we did that. Um, here is, now you notice that every time I exit it, uh, Wild Apricot, that's the thing in Wild Apricot, it asked me if I wanted to, uh, it just kind of kicks me back to um, the homepage default. But, um, this is actually the, uh, a wild apricot gadget. We're using the um, events gadget. And whenever you click on it on a gadget and then edit it, you'll see some information that you can change or modify here in the left sidebar. So this is using some custom design that uh, layout that we created, but also uh, you have, they give you some control over the tags, so we've actually created different category tags for different kinds of events. We've got conferences, lectures, talks, tours, tour and talks. I don't recall whether we set up these categories or if you did, I think, um, but in any case, they exist, and that's probably going to be a good thing going forward because it'll give you an increased amount of control over the types of events that you want to show in that particular gadget. Okay, so for example, I didn't want to show lectures here. I would uncheck lectures, and currently, since this is not a lecture, this one still displays, but you can see that's how the filter works. So, pretty intuitive. Um, access settings, so whether, whether you want to show it to the public or not. If you've got an event which is restricted, but you may want to show it to the public, that's what that box is for. Um, I'm going to continue to, to just look and see if there's anything else um, on this page. Now, some elements on this page I will not be able to edit because they're part of the template. So I don't recommend it, but it is possible to edit page templates, which are the des overall design templates for individual pages. I'm just going to look at this quickly, and I think if um, 
just remember that a page template is uh, and is used can be used throughout the site. Now the homepage template is is distinct, so it's only used once. And then we have a member only template. But uh, I'm going to click on the home template first because we were just there. You can see it looks a little bit different than what we were just looking at. And that is because if I wanted to edit this page, uh, for example, maybe I wanted to replace the logo or uh, maybe I didn't want to show the menu anymore. You know, I would do it in the template here. But these striped areas are uh, not really directly editable. It's just showing, it's just giving people options to drag various gadgets there so that they can um, move around. So you can see we have um, those three gadgets there in the middle of the page. What is it? Events, members, and, and uh, learning, and, and so on. But this area down here is part of the template. So I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of an idea, a little flavor. Um, gadgets are controlled on, on this screen. So we don't typically drag gadgets into the page template. We do that uh, on, it depends, but, but in this case we want to leave this area free so that you can directly edit it in the uh, page editor. And uh, layouts, uh, it just allows you to select how many, basically how many columns, and there is a custom layout option um, for, for placeholders. So I'm going to cancel out of the page layout screen. Um, system pages, basically, you don't want to edit these. <laughs> In many cases, you can't edit them, or you shouldn't, but sometimes we do when we're um, creating a custom theme. So... These are specific to Wild Apricot. Um, yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't click on. I wouldn't go into these. Uh, to, I just wouldn't recommend it. I am going to go. I wanted to show you files because you remember I was showing you the the slideshow gadget that appears on the home page, and you may recall that there were some files that uh, some image files there. So this is a a file manager for Wild Apricot, and it's here that you can upload, um, let's say, image, image files. Now, you'll come to this, if you're in the text editor and you want to place an image, you'll, you'll automatically come to this uh, area anyway. But if, you, if for some reason you needed to, uh, okay, there, uh, let's see. Now it's opening up. If you, it's a little, sometimes there's a little bit of a lag when I'm doing a go-to meeting, so that's, um, it won't lag like that when you're doing this directly. But you can see that we've got a number of images in here, and we, we tried to give them names, or they were already had pretty descriptive names already. And I can scroll down to see more. So we've got a lot of these uh, uh, JPEGs, and I believe some PDFs are in here as well. And that's the, the file manager. So it's, this is a good, uh, and you'll see the slider folder right there. That's where we're actually the sliding images are, are, are um, stored. So if you, if you wanted to ever add or remove some of these images, this is the folder where you want to uh, upload the images to. We've even got um, spaces. In, in these images, um, in the file names rather. But that's where you'll find uh, those files, okay? So very useful. Uh, documents, I don't know if we have any documents in here. Oh yeah, here's where the PDFs are. So all the past issues of Eden are stored in this folder. And I think these will look familiar to you. We've got quite a bit. Or that uh, journal has been around for a while. So I see going back to 1996 of May. So that's where the PDFs are stored. So I would recommend that um, you keep this basic structure where 
Uh, PDFs are stored in the Documents folder. Pictures are stored in the, JPEGs are stored in the Pictures folder. And then slideshow images are stored in the slider subfolder. Okay. Now, um, colors and styles, themes, CSS, you probably, if you were using one of the standard wild apricot themes, you would uh, try to use uh, these tabs here. But Generally, I'm not. I'm. I'm going to recommend that you not uh, play around with um, with these. Otherwise, you might inadvertently change the look of your site. So, uh, but that's uh, theme overrides. It's just uh, kind of more technical area. I'm not going to spend any time there. Um, so I'm going to now move on to events. Um, I think. This is typically the most difficult area to understand. So um, I'm going to start by saying that since we already have our first event in the system, in the future when you want to add an event, I'm going to recommend that you just duplicate the settings of this event and then make your changes or edits in the new edit file, edited file. So let's. Um, First, I'm just going to click on this and kind of give you a little guided tour here. So uh, you can see that if I wanted to, I'm going to click on the edit button. And the event title is, I'm not going to make any changes to this, by the way, but I'm just kind of showing what, uh, what the edit screen looks like. This is the event title. And again, if I wanted to make a change, I, um, I could by um, just making it directly there. Now you'll see that this area here is, the editor is, is blanked out and that's because um, we've defined the styles already in the template. So here you're simply just ed editing content of the event, which would be the event title um, some tags, and you'll see here are the event tags that we were looking at earlier. Conference, lecture, talk, tour, tour and talk. Those have already been entered, so we can uh, identify which tag we want to associate with this particular event in Palm Springs. Uh, which, by the way, here's the location, Palm Springs, California. Uh, for time zone, very important. Usually this will be checked, uh, Pacific time. After all, it is an organization based in California, so it makes sense. Um, start date, end date. Uh, you can also specify the time if you want to, um, you know, especially if it's a luncheon type of event. Now, uh, it looks like in the event options that we're not going to show the registrants who want to be listed, but there's that's what that checkbox is for. So if somebody signs up and we've indicated that we're going to show the registration list, and if they if a member has opted to to show to share their information, then it would show up automatically. It's kind of different layers of access privileges there, and. Guest registration. Uh, a guest is somebody who is not a member, but if you want to open up an event to non-members, then um, in this section here, you would specify whether they would be added to the contacts list uh, or not. And so we currently selected uh, do not add new guests to the contacts list, um, which is um, you can't see it from the screen, but that's what I started with, contacts and members, those tabs. And, okay, so uh, on this side, in the description, you can add an image. And you can see that when I click on the image, then suddenly this uh, uh, my, these options com come up, and I can... Um, add an image, and so if I, I currently have an image, but if I wanted to add another one, I could just click in a space below here, 
and insert another image. And the first window that I see is a representation of all those JPEGs and PDFs that are in that file folder that we were looking at earlier. See, it's under resources. So this is resources pictures. Now, um, it's actually not showing me documents, which is kind of the default. If I wanted to insert a document, that's something else, like a PDF. Uh, so I would have to go to File. And you see, when I go to File, then I can insert a document for download, such as a PDF, uh, such as one of these archived uh, issues of Eden. So. That's kind of how the editor works. Um, you have some other options. If you want to add um, HTML, special HTML, and paste it in there, you could, or a table. Um, this is sometimes useful, a divider. It's just a, an HTML divider. I think we have a divider here, for example, right down there. And uh, we have another image and so forth. Okay? So that's kind of a quick overview of editing events, and if I were, uh, I'm gonna kind of go into some of these other sub-tabs because um, we were just editing the event details, but you've also got a registration form, and uh, by default it's gonna load the common fields, uh, but you have the option to add some custom fields here. So if I wanted to make changes to this form, I would again click on the green edit button. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back. Oh no, I'm not going to go back. I'm going to uh, continue actually. Uh, registration types and settings. So we have uh, tickets and uh, member tickets and regular tickets. So I guess that depends on whether they're a member or not. Members pay $80, uh, non-members pay $100. Uh, that's the general public, or as I like to say, the vast and washed. Um, and if you wanted to add another registration type, you would do so by clicking on the Add Type button here. And then you would see um, some uh, a field for a name, description, price, uh, if you wanted to specify um, the maximum number, that's registration limit for that type. And uh, like, for example, maybe you have a sister organization on the East Coast and they might decide they want to come out and escape the cold weather in October. And uh, I don't know if it's cold in October or not, but you know, they're, they're, it's, a, it's a sister organization on the East Coast. And so you want to give them special pricing. And, uh, and this is where you could kind of create a special category for them and, and just give it a name like um, East Coast Landscape Society, you know, whatever it is, and, uh, and, and open it up that way. Um, you do have an option to use a registration code. It's a little confusing, but essentially this is a code where if it's a secret event, then you can create a code so that only those who have the code can actually uh, register for it. And then you can also um, limit the registration period if you only want to make it available, for example, the month before from September 1st through September 15th, for example, then you would just add uh, and the calendar menu would come up and I will just go ahead and select September 1st and then September 15th. Oops, I selected August by mistake. See, it makes it red. Uh, and it's okay. Anytime you see a red box like that, that's that's that means you made a mistake. Um, it's kind of a little cute. And if unavailable, I'll show the special formatting. I'm not going to save the settings, but if you wanted to save it, you could. Uh, but I'm going to cancel instead. Uh, we are moving on to emails, so, um, you know, people forget 
they, they might even, they, they sign up for an event and then they forget about it. So that's why Wild Apricot has this reminder system. It's very useful. Um, mm -hmm. So there's the announcement email. We can have up to three of them. Now, currently they're not set, but this is where you would set them. Um, so if I wanted, you can either do a send now or you can schedule it for a particular date. Uh, this is it's very useful because the system will automatically send out announcement, uh, event announcement emails to people who have not yet registered, reminder emails to those who have already registered, so you see they're up to three. And then we've also got registration emails. Just want to let you know, you know, event, you've re registered for this event. And there's some boilerplate content that um, you can edit. So let's see, if I clicked on this, you can see then that um, this is uh, the, the content of the boilerplate template, and you can edit this file. These uh, codes that you see between curly braces or curly brackets are called macros. So um, that means that when the email goes out, they will automatically be filled with that member's or that, that who's registered for the event's first name, last name, and so forth. The event title is automatically filled out and so forth. So you don't have to automate, you don't have to change this email every time you have a new event because this, this event specifics will be automatically filled in. At the end, customized to that individual. So that's part of the power of the system. And, uh, but if you do want to make some changes to it, I think it's actually a very good email. It kind of sums everything up. But uh, you can customize it by clicking on this. Um, so uh, you can even send a test email. Now, if I want to edit it, I would click on the green button, and then I would get my familiar my uh, Wild Apricot event uh, or text editor, visual editor, okay? And I could add an image, for example, uh, if I wanted to, to this email, or I could change the, the written content. I'm gonna cancel, okay? And I'm going to click back now. Oh, you know, this, this just means that if you want to see what that email looks like, you can send a test email. And uh, test email successfully sent to my email. Okay, so we're going to wait for that to come in a little bit. Um, but I'm going to just go back. And that's what the emails look like. And then finally on this tab, Registrants and invitees. Uh, if I had registrations, which I don't so far, they would appear on the screen. And uh, if it was a particularly long list, I could search for a specific name. Okay, so uh, that's kind of the end of my overview for, for events. And members, this, this screen shows you the uh, total number of members that are currently in the system and broken down by membership level. So we have uh, numbers attached, so 68 complementary, 29 family, 335 individual for life, and so on for a total of 532 members. And out of that total, we have 530 active. Uh, now these numbers may change once we go through uh, after the final import and you've had a chance to kind of look through. I think that uh, typically what we wanna do when you feel that the site is ready is that we want to invite the members. So now we've, we've invited the board members, now we wanna invite the members uh, after we've finished all our changes 
to try logging into the system. And so I typically uh, help set up a, an email blast to all the members, which will contain a custom link to their uh, membership login and where they'll be asked to uh, enter a password and, uh, and then uh, review their profile information and update it uh, so that uh, they, can, they can fill out that information, change their privacy settings and so forth. Uh, and you'll see that uh, we've got uh, one person is overdue for their renewal. And uh, we've got a new one that's pending. Let's look at the new one. Uh, oh, look, uh, I'm, I'm a new member and, and I, um, I'm pending. So let's go ahead and activate Peter without payment. And um, that's how it is. And then if, if uh, Peter then shows up to an event with $60 in cash or something, we can record payment. That's how that works. Uh, this, by the way, if you ever want to um, go back to the previous screen, I, I do not click the back browser button. Always click, always click the back link here. Uh, and it's just because of, this is basically software, and um, we have a lot of things going on in this in this uh, browser area. So uh, always click that that uh, back link there. Uh, let's go back again. And we are back to where we were. And um, so that's sort of an overview of, of the membership tab. You can also export all the membership information from here. It'll, um, if I click on export all, I have a choice of um, Excel, CSV, or XML, uh, which is a, a sort of an Excel variant. And then um, you can either export all the fields or you can by unchecking this, you can get more specific, like maybe I don't want the user ID, and um, maybe I don't want group participation. I'm gonna cancel that, but that's what export is. But this is an important one because from time to time you may wanna email all the members. So if, you, um, if we're ready then to do that email blast, I would click on this button from the members tab. And then um, we currently have no save templates. So uh, we'd want to set up a, a, a template here, um, kind of with your, with your new graphics, with the logo and, and with um, some of the, the font settings. And, um, and then go ahead now, if I'm, since I don't have any saved templates, Wild Apricot has politely provided, very generously provided some of their uh, tackiest designs for us to use. So for example, if I, you know, wanted to do this wild apricot golf club one. Oh, that's not so bad, actually. <laughs> I'm being a little snobby, but um, you know, you could use this. And since it's a um, since it's a, a template, uh, I can I might want to uh, change, you know, put in my own logo here, and and so forth. But really, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and um, and just uh, let's see, go back and look at preview. Uh, look and see what it looks like on mobile. Uh, recipients, so I can choose that. And then um, finally review and send. So we're not gonna send this right now, but um, I'm actually gonna exit this, exit without sending. But um, if I wanted to actually compose an email, I want to make sure that you anyone. So you know, if you want to change the content, you would, uh, go ahead and start typing here. That's the idea. Uh, composing an email based on a, on a template uh, only lets you edit the area that uh, is editable, okay? And then you can preview that, and then you pick your recipients, um, reply to email address, uh, that would be something you wanna check. If you wanna change it, click on this. And maybe if it's a committee, uh, we want Kay Martin to be um, the, 
for a flight to address. Anyway, uh, contact, contact list, clear all recipients, and then um, you can select all contacts or you can select all members. So when we do our membership blast, we'll be checking that box. Okay. So that is um, kind of a review of, of how to send out our email communications. I'm going to exit without saving. Uh, I'm gonna, I, we don't have much time left. I want to make sure you have time to ask, you know, ask your questions. I'm just going to quickly show you that the donations tab uh, is where you manage organization donations. And I know that uh, you know, since we don't have any donations right now, you can manually record donations and you can create a donations report. All of this is customizable. I believe we have a donor form set up somewhere right now. Uh, let me see if we do. Um, resources, membership blog, maybe not. Okay, well, it's something to think about. I'm going to go back to admin view. Um, we may want to set up a, a donor gadget so people can make donations. I just thought we had for some reason. Um, finances, uh, this is really bookkeeping area. So um, there is an export to QuickBooks feature. I'm, I'm not going to go over that in this tutorial, but I've used it. Um, it. It exports to a QuickBooks file that I believe the extension is IIS or IIF. Um, and then you would save that file to your desktop and then import it into QuickBooks. And it, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just imports all the membership account information, membership status, payment status, and so forth into QuickBooks. And, uh, you know, there's an income report and uh, you can have some other export options. So this is probably where you would spend the most time um, if you happen to be a treasurer or a book, or, or just managing the books for the organization. Um, so this is a new feature. Um, they are now they now support Square uh, Point of Sale, and that's particularly useful if you are at an event and people are paying with a credit card. And you have an iPhone, for example, and um, you know the Square has a swipe uh, hardware device that plugs into one of the ports on your iPhone or iPad, and then or Android device. And um, so, um, Wild Apricot supports Square point of sale, so it's just something if if you happen to get to that point. Um, and that's kind of my finances um, overview. Uh, email we already looked over, and then settings. Um, if you are having a tough time finding what you're looking for uh, by clicking through these main tabs, I sometimes just go straight to the settings tab, and here's kind of a different overview, so which um, uh, helps me find, for example, uh, payment settings. So if I clicked on finances, payment settings, you'll see that we set up PayPal payment standard already with your PayPal account. So that's just, um, you know, if I just wanted to see, hey, you know, what version of PayPal are we using? Um, so you can see right there, payment standard. Um, and, uh, oh, you know, I want to change the organization email. So I go straight to that tab. So settings is actually kind of a, a, a nice way to navigate the site. Um, if, uh, and I'll be going to this area later when we uh, look into changing the do custom domain settings, uh, when we launch a custom domain for Wild Apricot, switch over to custom domain, and, and so on. So that's kind of my overview. I, I think... Um, I think we should kind of open. I see we're now at four o'clock already. 
So I went a little bit over time. I apologize for that. But um, did you guys have any questions that you wanted me to address? Or did you all fall asleep? I do hear some snoring in the background. I don't know. <laughs> no, no it was really wonderful. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Uh, well, I tried. Peter, yeah. Peter, this is the treasurer, Judy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that sent you the question saying, since we're in the middle of event registration, could we start using it on Wild Apricot? Um, would it be possible for us to, we've had about 20 people register so far. For the event? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So. And so, we haven't set up yet to dump the registrations into this. Instead, we get um, emails um, from PayPal and from our current website. Uh huh. Yeah, we can import them in there. I think the way to do it would be to go ahead and click on the event where we um, were earlier. And let's see, um, where we add registrants. Um, well. But, but it, so Peter, my, but my question is actually, when do we get to the point where somebody registers and this their form just automatically loads into Wild Apricot? Um, when they start using the event. Okay, so let's go to the public view, for example. And uh, I'm going to go, uh, let's go click on read more. So then this is the actual, I'm now on the public page. This is what the event looks like on your website. Uh -huh. And um, the register button is actually, you know, it's kind of a pale green color. Maybe we need to make it a little more vibrant. But basically, if I click on the register, then um, if I if I start to go through this process, like um, enter my email address, and then I fill out this information, um, you know, total amount. It's a regular ticket. Uh, fill in uh, as much information. I can't uh, honestly tell if. None of these other fields are required, so. Yeah, let me say it out, though. I mean, like, like the we. Okay, so when somebody, it's not set up yet. In other words. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's, it's like they completed set up for the event. Yeah. How it has the wrong. It has actually the wrong the wrong price in there and everything. Oh. How would we get it set up? Ah, okay. So let me go back to admin view. And um, we would specifically, so we kind of took it about halfway. I think um, uh, if you want to, if you want to, for example, customize the registration form, then you would click on registration form, edit, and so we have to do. Yeah, so we have to do that. You're not going to take the already created one off of our website and put it in here for us. Is that right? You really, I, it's, I, yeah, I find that really hard to do. I, I feel like uh, it's easier for, it, it's better if I show you how to do it, then um, if I start doing, I'm just afraid that I might make the wrong settings and create uh, a problem. Um, but you, for example, you may not want to have website as part of the registration, you know, so I would just uncheck the uh, fields. We don't have um, under, you notice how it said sample events field. That's because this hasn't been, uh, this hasn't been edited yet, but but if you wanted to make this uh, meal choice, for example, um, I'll go ahead and make that. And then, um, Um, yeah, that's because it's already used. It's, it's actually select um, or meal preference. I'll just call it meal preference. And then um, meal choice, and you can see we've got, uh, I don't know if these are the actual choices that you have. Um, 
but you know you would edit this um, like so. These would these would be uh, radio buttons, and then you can add a new item like let's say fish. and and so forth okay so um, this this has just been updated but I haven't saved those changes until I click that button so that's the registration form um, and then going further um, these settings need to be customized as well like whether we want to limit the registrations to a certain number so if I do want to limit it, maybe I want to have no more than 500 guests. Um, you okay with that, that Stephen? Or um, yeah, I'm sorry. I think I think Peter, you misunderstood my question. Actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. The question is, when are we going to get to the point? I mean, Cheryl, Cheryl, Cheryl's on the call. Cheryl, you're on the call, aren't you? Did we lose everybody? Cheryl had to drop. Okay. Oh, okay. Are, are, are we, okay. So, I mean, I could go in with Cheryl Scott, who's our who's our website manager. Yeah. Um, and we could go in and edit this together, um, and we could set up the reminders and all of that. Right. Um, I don't have a problem with that, but my my question to you is. What do we anticipate the date will be when somebody actually will be able to register and and this and and the and it will be populated on the wild apricot website? Well, I think uh, let me give you a proposed date. I would say that uh, so today's date is August eighth. Um, I think that right now we're this week we should complete the last of the, um, you know, that list of changes that I got from David. Um, I, I think that by the end of this week, we'll have uh, the, the membership data finalized. Uh, and that's between Brandy and, and Raymond. They're, they're getting that organized. So then I think the next, so a few steps have to happen first. First, we have to finalize membership, which I think we can do this week. Then I think we need the board to basically say, you know what, we're ready to switch over from the uh, current site, I think it's a WordPress site, to the Wild Apricot site and uh, invite members to um, kind of activate or bring current their membership profiles. And at that time, so that could be next week. And then I, I would say the earliest would probably be next week. And what I would suggest is if you could send me in an email just all of the event details, event particulars, I can help you with the setup. Well, uh, they're would, right on our website. You can go look at them. So is the registration form. Okay. All right. I don't need to put an email to you. Uh, the other, yeah. I'll the give other, you a shot. And, and by the way, we do have uh, we do have a, a donate um, form on our website too. You just didn't okay. find it. I guess. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I did. I didn't see. Uh, I didn't see the. Yeah, I, did, I didn't see. Uh, I didn't see. Is that me? Gosh, I'm hearing an echo. That's weird. Gosh, I'm hearing an echo. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Close. I didn't see the donor gadget on the I didn't see the donor gadget on the Where would that be? Oh, this is Kelly. Oh, this is Kelly. Okay, somebody's got a speaker from this phone. Okay, somebody's got a speaker from this phone. Okay. 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 So the second question is that uh, how do we get the donor information on there? We can get it on there. Maybe we create a new page called the donation, or we can add it to the new page. Or we can add it to the donation. 
Let's look at the current site. I'm Peter. It's Julie. I'm Peter. It's Julie. I have general questions. I have Should I just general email questions. them to you? Email them to you? Gosh, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you because I'm hearing a weird echo. Is somebody on a on a speakerphone? Is somebody on a speakerphone? No. Okay. I'm not. All right. No worries. We'll just I'll just do the best I can. Yeah, I can't find a donation. Maybe it's under the membership tab. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's scroll down the home page. It's somewhere on the home page. Scroll down to oh, the there home page. Okay. Let's see. Did we do that? Oops. No. Yeah, well, contributions matter. Oh, it's a join today. I don't, I don't like that text there. That should probably be donate instead. Let's see what happens. No, uh, it's membership. So it doesn't look like we created a, a donation page. So this, uh, that is something we need to correct. So this should say donate instead of join. And, yes. Um, and there's something else continuing student. Yeah. Okay. So that's what it supports. I see. Yeah. Yeah. That should say document. James. I'm making a note to myself. Actually, let's see if we can do that right now. It might be instructive. All right, so I'll go to website, site pages, site pages, all, edit, scroll down. It says donate there. Yeah, hold on. Edit. Oh, there is a, no, okay. Okay, so it's going to be here. Ah, it's in the page template, okay. Cancel, page template, home, edit. Exclamation, exclamation after that. Okay. <laughs> Donate, you fool. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> I think, I think, I think we did that in the box it's below on the membership one just to be consistent. Yeah, and then I'm going to change it to Donate. There is a page. Oh, access to this page is currently restricted to administrators. Well, I see. Okay. Let's apply changes. Save. That means I need to go back to site pages. Donate. Hey, look at that. There it is. Um, now I'm going to edit this page. And, oops. I want to make it public. And yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. make yeah. it. Let's make it. Let's make it. Let's just make it up to the home. Let's just make it up to the home. We can change this later. We can change this later. And then public view. And then public view. <laughs> All right. Oh, it looks like donate cup. Oh, it looks like donate cup. Okay. We don't like that. We don't like that.
Yeah, it did. So Donnie got yeah, it. Did. So Donnie got There goes home dummy. There goes home dummy. I don't like these pages. I like the reading. I like the reading. I'm not having a hard time hearing him. I'm not having a hard time hearing him. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It sounds like I don't look at it. I know. It sounds like I don't look at it. What? Okay, so home. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a terrible echo. It's giving me. I, I have to get off the call. This is Judy. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see if I can change this. But, um, I can't because if I change my voice setting, because if I change my voice setting. So now it says donate. If I click on donate, I go to the donate page. It's a simple gadget. I can enter the amount and then comment and then pay. Okay, and then it'll ask for name and all that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, is, can I have some general questions? Sure. Okay, so you mentioned when a member is, let's say, doesn't rejoin or lapses, that um, you archive them, but do they stay in as a contact? Well, they're not archived unless I archive them directly. They're not automatically archived. So Right. Yeah. But when you archive someone, do they stay in as a contact? No, they're removed from contact when you archive them. Okay. Because we keep um, our non, you know, lapsed members in as contacts. Yeah. So just so I know. Okay, remove from contacts. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what that means is that they will no longer be able to receive emails. And, um, but if they come to the website, okay. they can still register for an event. They're just not a contact anymore. And they might okay. get added if, depending on your event settings. Okay, and then, so am I correct in assuming that when a member signs up, all the information is populated into Wild Apricot? That's in the appropriate. Okay, okay. And then um, here's a question. We have, I think there's a good amount of members who probably won't set up their account. Okay. They're not, you know, um, really doing email or computers, mm -hmm. um, does that make a difference? I mean, well, it just means that we have to find, well, their information is already in ACT and we've been working on right. it. Then when we import for the final time, they may already be in the system. They probably should be if they already are in ACT. Oh. And so, yes, they are. But. Yeah, and then someone can just uh, update their information for them. And they, these are people that probably will mail in a check, for example, when it's time to renew. Ex exactly, right. Yeah. So, Wild Apricot then allows you to just um, record payment, for example, as a check. Um, and I'll go, let's see, let's go to contact uh, members. And let's just look at, um, uh, you know, you got a renewal overdue here. And, um, well, this is just a test, but I'll, I'll click on it. Just say it's one of your older members, and you can renew their membership for them. Okay. And then uh, check their information to make sure it's correct. And okay. Save it. And then this is where... Uh, you have some options about activating without an invoice or generating an invoice, perhaps. So, yeah, it's it's definitely, uh, I think I did this earlier where when you activate without an invoice, um, so their membership is now um, active, but um, I may need to, 
record payment. And that can be done, um, you know, you can just say, oh, they're active. Mm -hmm. so therefore, they can't be active unless you've accepted their payment. Um, right. And uh, uh, if as far as the finances, I think, um, invoice and receipt settings, let's see. Maybe they want to have a payment receipt emailed to them, so uh, you know, record payment. So finances record payment is for okay. or the check. Select existing contact. Um, test. Select. Oops. Select. And this is where, you know, you select tender, it was a check. Okay. So I can manually enter the stuff I get through the mail. Okay. Yeah. It's in the finances tab. That's where you would record that. Um, right. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think those were my main questions. Okay. Um, great. Well, I'm going to, um, let's, uh, I'm going to stop recording.